king of the turf, pampered favorite of the few. His glory has been told in many a song and story. Honor where honor is due. But there's a horse of another color, America's oldest and finest breed of horse. A horse whose story, oddly enough, has never been told. What kind of a horse? The quarter horse. The cowpony who gets things done, who made possible the expansion of our American empire and the establishment of the vast cattle kingdoms. The luxury of racing thoroughbreds is called the sport of kings. Well, that's why I say that owning a quarter horse should be dubbed the sport of Mr. Average Man. Why? Because the quarter horse works without let-up six days a week. And on the seventh? You guessed it. On the seventh, he goeth to the races, the quarter-mile races. That's why he's called a quarter horse. About two months ago, when I found myself at the Scottsdale County Fair, I knew nothing about all that. I was just a farm boy from Indiana, looking for an angle to make an honest dollar. How did I find out about quarter horses? Well, thereby hangs a tail. Uh, a horse's tail. Yep. He won the sixth down at San Bernou. Match race. 23 seconds flat. <whistles> Ran the pants off a of silver sage. Tucson, that was. Got a lot of gasoline, huh? I'll run him at anything in these parts here. I don't mean to talk out of turn, but I got a pretty good horse. My name's McDougal. Robert Bruce McDougal. Yeah? What class your horse run in? Huh? I mean, A, B, or C. Oh, blamed if I know, but he runs pretty good. I thought you were looking for a match race, but... Uh... Maybe I was. Where's your horse? <laughs> Don't go away. I'll be right back. Ever see this man around here before? Don't seem to know much about horses. Now, that's a mighty fine-looking animal. Quite a mini poker game from a cowboy. Yeah? OK, I'll run my horse against yours. How much you got? Well, let me see now. I only got 250. Well, not much, but uh, fair enough, 250. Maybe I should have some inducement against a champ like that. Maybe I should get some odds. Oh, no. Nothing to it. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. Hey, wait a minute. Two to one. Your 500 against my 250? You got yourself a bet. an extra 20? A little match race. You're a jockey, ain't you? For 20? Sure. Good. Meet me at the paddock in 10 minutes. <laughs> OK. A jockey? What am I saying? Hey, mister! Hey, mister! I said at the paddock. Yeah, but uh, there's something I think I better tell you. You see? I is this the horse? Sure, that's Jojo. Ah, fine figure he'd cut at Hialeah. <laughs> beauty is as beauty runs, Sonny. Now, what's on your mind? Well, nothing, nothing now, I guess. Look, do you see that trailer over there? Yeah. Get the horse in the air as soon as you can, the minute you win the race. Win the race? How do you know you'll win with this? <laughs> you leave that to Jojo, and my little good luck piece here. Now, don't forget the trailer. OK, but what's the hurry? I got to be at Maricopa Fair tomorrow morning. Now, here's your cap. Go to it and show me your dust. <laughs> OK. Well, what's this going to be, a turtle race? No. No, hold it, kid. Yes, sir, a couple of the boys 
friends get together and bingo, you got yourself another speed classic. It's all in the good old tradition of quarter horse racing, one of America's oldest and most exciting sports. A sport which never stopped being popular here in the great Southwest. Now we hear it's coming back into favor again with folks all over the nation. Now the two horses, Tumbleweed and Jojo, are moving up behind the gates. They're getting into position. take a chance on him. What kind of a chance? Oh, say four to one, I'd run him at your horse. Call that a chance? Well, three to one, then. Well, OK, you got a bet. All right. <laughs> Howdy, Mr. McDougal. You uh, wouldn't be interested in an experienced jockey, would you, Mr. McDougal? Look, um, my training cost you $250. $750. Well, I'd like to win that back for you, Mr. McDougal. Besides, yeah, I, I, I could use that $20. You won't believe this, but I haven't eaten in three days. Look, I'll, I'll even take $15. I learn awful fast, Mr. McDougal. I'll, I'll take $10. I'll, I'll tie myself in the saddle. I'll, I'll, I'll put glue in my pants. Drive the car and trailer to the exit gate. I'll be installed 13. Steak and potatoes, here I come. Well, maybe I'll settle for a plate of hash. Must be powerful stuff. Never fails, eh, Jojo? I wonder if I took one, I could win a potato race. There they are, Sonny. <laughs> uh, yeah. Accident insurance. Oh, well, that's better than my glue. Now, don't forget, Sonny, as soon as you win the race, you head straight for that trailer, eh, Sonny? <laughs> you know, you keep calling me Sonny. You know what's going to happen, Mr. McDougal? First thing you know, I'll be calling you Pappy. Wouldn't that be nauseating? This time, it's Yellow Sands, Gordon Willis in the saddle, and Jojo, Lon Decker up. The horses are lining up. Yellow Sands in the gate. There's Jojo now. There's the flag. And there they go. Jojo is out front, going like a rocket. Sometimes that horse even surprises me. Thank you. Bye. How 
you like to pick up some more of these, Sonny? I take it you don't have a steady job. I'm getting tired of looking for a new jockey in every town. Besides, it saves a lot of wear and tear on the horse. <laughs> OK, you're on, Pappy. Look looked like he couldn't even walk. That horse was flying. He broke the track record. He also broke the record getting out of here. Say, I think I'll have a little talk with the track steward. It's a good idea. We've had other complaints, too, Mr. Burt, but the complaints aren't any proof. All you've got to do is give McDougal's horse a saliva test. Well, even as racing secretary of the association, I'd be overstepping my authority unless, uh, well, unless he wins again under suspicious circumstances. Then we might be able to tip off the track officials. And so we crisscrossed the Southwest. McDougal apparently steering an unpredictable course. And a young character whose ambition had nothing whatever to do with riding now turned into a pretty fair jockey. Every time I rode that dynamic old piece of horse flesh, I stashed away another 20, never dreaming there might be anything fishy about the whole deal. Last race of the season tomorrow, Sonny. That suits me fine. Too much brain work. Besides, I've got enough save now to last me quite a while. Giorgio's going to miss you. Yeah, and I'll miss the two of you. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Say, Mac, how'd you ever get in this racket anyway? You don't look much like a horseman. Oh, by accident. I won Giorgio from a cowboy. You mean that business about the crap games on the level? Well, to tell the truth, I... I want Jojo playing checkers. You see, I'm sort of an expert at games. And there was a nice little ranch along with him, too. Which reminds me, I could use a good man down there. The pay's not bad, either. Well, uh, thanks anyway, Mac, but it uh, wouldn't work in with my plan. You see, I want to be a sports writer. Sports writer? Did you ever write anything? Well, sure. Ever sell any of it? Nope. Well, maybe a few little things to farm papers back in Indiana. But that's why I've got to go to school. There's a pretty good college of journalism over in Los Angeles. You see, Mac, I want to write about big-time racing. Hylia, Aqueduct, Tanferan, Santa Anita. Funny thing, I'm shooting for the big time, too. Got to get me a thoroughbred. Yeah? <laughs> Thoroughbreds cost money. Big money. <laughs> You stick to me, Sonny, and I'll show you how to get one without money. <laughs> you uh, figure on winning a man of war, a little old crap game? Well, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> hey, Mac, it is all right for a, a jockey to bet on his own horse, isn't it? Eh? Oh, sure, sure, Sonny, sure. Well, that, uh, that school costs a lot of dough, and tomorrow's my last chance. Here, will you place this for me? $280, right on JoJo's nose. He's a sure bet, Mac. You, you, you won't forget now, will you? Uh, sure, Sonny, sure. You're a cinch to make a big killing, Sonny. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at all. 
They're approaching the gate, moving very calmly. Quarter horses are never hurried. Not until the gates pop open, that is, and then they fairly fly. Master Sergeant's in the gate. And now JoJo's lining up for the match race. They're lined up, waiting for that signal. And take my advice, folks. You better not blink an eye, or you'll miss seeing those horses taking off like a couple of jets. There's the flag. And they're out. Come on, Jojo. Jojo. Jojo, get going. Come on, Jojo, come on. And that, my dreams about school and journalism, took a nosedive at that nightmarish track on the exact spot where I left my shirt. So I went to McDougal's Ranch, a place that should have been called Ramshackle Acres, because that's just what that chewed up old ruin there on the right looked like, especially when compared with that million dollar model farm on the hill, Caballos de la Reina. In Spanish, that means horses of the queen. A fit description for a place that was full of horses and belonged to a queen. A queen who also had certain ambitions about McDougal's place. But of all this, I knew nothing at the moment. I was wiser by only one experience, that quarter horses, and Jojo in particular, were broken down, undependable, treacherous old plugs, and that I'd have to work mighty hard if I ever wanted to catch up with that school in Los Angeles. Old McDougal had a ranch, E-I-E-I-O. Well, holy Herbert, but ain't the postmaster general. Canada? India? Belgium? Siam? Transjordan? Aha! Code messages. So that's your racket, eh? A spy for foreign powers. Oh, you think you got me, you know, eh? <laughs> well, you got another thing coming. Hey, Mac, uh, what goes on here anyway? Oh, one of my hobbies, chess. By a male. Oh, excuse me. I want you to meet my opponents. His Royal Highness, the King of Siam. Pleased to meet you, Your Majesty. Prime Minister of Belgium. Howdy. The Marshal of Luxembourg. Da -da 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 -da. And His Supreme Highness, the Sultan of Yemen. Oh. <laughs> and uh, seven seven one o oh, o oh, one three in the death cell at Sing Sing, poor fella. Good head on him, too. I hope to be able to checkmate him before he... Uh... <laughs> Mac, what's all this got to do with horse racing? Everything. You see, Sonny, there are two kinds of sports, called the sport of kings. Thoroughbred racing and chess. I want to play the first so I can play the second. Sounds confusing. That's why I need that thoroughbred, to make more money. Money to get time. Time to play chess. But, uh, aren't you just a little embarrassed to entertain all these high-powered characters in this, uh, palace? <laughs> That's one of your chores, Sonny. You see, manual labor and chess don't mix. Oh, uh, no, I shouldn't have asked. Hmm, smart guy, this fellow. Check. But he'd better hurry up. You know what I like about chess? The one game in the world you can't cheat at.
what are you doing so far away from the Met, Miss... Uh... Betty. Betty Richard. Oh. I've been around here a couple of days now. How come I haven't seen you before? I just arrived this morning on a portrait assignment for America's popcorn queen. Oh. This is flyaway, like it? I wish I were a horse. Tell me, um, uh, why the disguise? This? This is no disguise. This is Jojo, the wreck of the Hesperus. And I am one of the shipwrecked crew. I don't quite follow you, but it's plain to see you don't know much about horses. Well, I know enough to bet that over there is a pretty terrific thoroughbred. And I know enough to bet that under this frowsy snood is a horse with good confirmation. Mm-hmm. Quite good. In fact, outstanding confirmation. Uh, but do you think it helps me to know I lost my shirt on a horse with good confirmation? Who's talking about racing? A horse doesn't have to be a flying machine to be good. You sure flare up fast. All I said was... Besides, it looks like you might have speed, too. Diamond T. That's a brand of a ranch down near Junction, Texas. I live not far from there. I wonder... on that brand. It's possible he might be a registered quarter horse. Tell me, with all those fine thoroughbreds over there, why are you so interested in a possible quarter horse? So what? So he's still three quarters short of being as good as a thoroughbred. You're only flaunting your ignorance, Mr. Oh, how careless of me. Alonzo Decker. But uh, all my friends call me Lon. Mr. Decker. Brr. You don't seem to know much about what we call the using horse. Oh, you can give me a thoroughbred anytime. Now, there's a horse with tradition background. Tradition. Why, the quarter horse was on this continent 165 years before the first thoroughbred ever set hoof on Plymouth Rock. Ah, but the sport of king is thoroughbred racing. Racing. Why, in 1656, quarter horse racing was already an American institution. Quarter horses are a distinct breed. Yeah, but think of all the money you can make from a good thoroughbred. Oh, money, money. How it is stupid. A horse, my dear Mr. Decker, has character, heart, and brains, and that's a whole lot more than can be said for some people. Well, anyway, she's got a good opinion of one of us. Say, I wonder, could she be the woman in our lives? Nobody home. the Bureau of Missing Persons? Gadding about all over creation like the headless horseman. I've had legions of lawyers and private operatives combing the landscape for you. What if this scandalous old eyesore of a so-called ranch should suddenly burn to the ground? Or is that too much to hope for? Zelda Bagley, America's popcorn queen descending on a mere commoner. I'm deeply touched, Your Majesty. I just got in from the East. Heard you'd finally returned, so I... So, Your Highness is ready to finish our little game, just as we left it six months ago. Oh, and six months before that, and on and on and on forever. Oh, oh look, this game is getting downright idiotic. Oh? You talked me into this. I've got to have ramshackle acres right away. Oh? Meanwhile, I've got more thoroughbreds coming in, and I haven't got room to train in. Oh? Yes, oh! That training track happens to be very important to me. You know I can't expand in any other direction. Oh, you know very well what I mean. I know. Mountains to the right of you, mountains to the left of you. Mountains to the rear of you, and, uh... You in front of me. Letting this place deteriorate into a, a hobo camp. 
Well, it's getting so I'm ashamed to invite my friends. I had your place appraised while you were absent. I'll give you 5,000. Let me see. If I won the game, I was to get Corsair third. But that was three years ago. I'm three years older now, so is the horse. No, he's no good for me purpose now. I've got a lot of respect for you, Zelda. When you want a thing, you go after it. And you made a successful switch from the wrong side of the tracks. Let's dispense with my biography. I want to get to the right track, too. Race track. I heard you have a new mare. Fly away. Since you want to put in a track now, I'll trade you my place for the mare. Trade? Fly away? For this dump? A horse that cost me $75,000? A horse that holds the world's record for three quarters of a mile? I want the best. No sense racing unless you win. But you, you must be out of your mind. Do you realize I, I'm naming a new popcorn bar after that mare? I'm having a picture painted to put on the wrappers. If you want my place, that's the price. Why, you honor Oh, I could murder you. Zelda! <laughs> well, I didn't say that Madam Queen agreed, but anyhow, I'm getting out of this two-bit racket for good. Two-bit racket? Mm -hmm. Why, Mac, how can you say that? Why, why, don't you know that the quarter horse has tradition? That he swam in ahead of the Mayflower? That, that it's the coming sport? The sport of the common man? The, the average man? The little man? Why, the hoi polloi? Is that what the young lady said? Uh-huh. This is wonderful, Mac. Just a wee bit cracked. About horses? Mm, quarter horses. Mm. But what the heck. Normal girls are a dime a dozen. <laughs> She's see. different. So this is a hobo camp, eh? Say there, Sonny. You want to do something for me? Shoot. Stop fixing things up around here. You know what I thought you just said? Stop fixing things up around here. I did. You did? But that's what you're paying me for. Well, sometimes not doing a job is worth more money than doing it. Let well enough alone, and for that, I'll give you a $5 raise. Your move, Madam Queen. Well, it looks like you're all set for next season. I'll, I'll be off on my round. Souvenir, maybe. Me. Sleep tight for insomnia. Where did you find us, Harry? Cleaning up stall four, Doc. Would this account for that slow horse? Certainly would. Probably figured he was being watched, and so he pulled a switcheroo and bet against his own horse. Original, anyway. If we could get a lead on his whereabouts, we could keep an eye on him. Yeah, and the kid who's been riding for him. When a lady sings, you shut up! When a lady sings, you shut up! I came over as soon as I got your message. You, I had a feeling. Texas Dandy. 
son of the great my Texas Dandy. A fine how do you do. She rushes a fellow to a rendezvous and then she goes for his horse. Under a hairdo that'd fool anybody but this little gal. Hello, Mr. Decker. Hello, Miss Richards. Fancy meeting you here. I checked on his brand, and I found you the most... You found a dandy from Texas hiding under Jojo's mane. Do you know what that means? Jojo's from the R.C. Tatum Ranch in Texas. He isn't Jojo at all. He's really... Texas dandy. Okay, so you change a horse's name in midstream. So does that change the horse? He's one of the greatest quarter horses in the country. Why, his bloodlines go clear back to the great horse Shiloh. Come here. When I got your message, I thought that you wanted to see me. I couldn't tell you there. The popcorn queen gave strict orders, no hobnobbing over the fence. Iron curtain between the ranches, huh? <laughs> Just because that old biddy wants to grab up all the land in sight. But that's so unimportant. The important thing now, is... Now, wait a minute. Who would be fool enough to gamble away a fine racehorse in a checker game? Easy. Texas Dandy was the outstanding quarter-running horse in Texas. He was mishandled, broke down. After that, anything could have happened. He went from hand to hand, one cowpoke after another had him. None of them caring about his bloodline or his record. Until finally... Finally, McDougal ends up with a broken-down quarter horse. No, you just can't make me believe that a horse that looks like that could ever have been as famous as you say. Clothes don't make the man. You'd be surprised what roaching his mane and pulling his tail would do for that horse. Mm, I'm sure I would be. All right, Doubting Thomas. One beauty treatment is worth a million words. Hand me the soap, Lon. Quite a difference. Boy, wait till McDougal sees him. You know, Betty, I said I wished I were a horse. Well, I'd like to qualify that. I wish I were a quarter horse. <laughs> Say, I wonder if there's a story here. A story? Uh-huh. Something to break into print with. Oh, I forgot. I never finished introducing myself, did I? Ron Decker, jockey, sports writer. Sports writer? Well, that's wonderful. And all the time I thought oh, you were... Oh, well, I, I don't like to brag about it. Why, you're the answer to a quarter horse's prayer. Only a quarter horse's. Oh, stop flirting with me. This is serious. A story about Jojo. Who is really Texas Dandy. See, maybe there is an angle here. Well, of course there is. Betty, let's team up. Hey, put on here. Oh, excuse me. Who's the horse? That's Texas Dandy, Mr. McDougal. Alias Jojo. What have you done to my horse? You spoiled everything now. I can't run a horse like that. But you said you were thrilled with short racing. I know, but how did I know I was going to have all this trouble with the old Bagley? But this is Texas Dandy. You should be proud to run him on any racetrack. Oh, I take the haircut that makes Jojo run. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't mean any harm. Well, we'll have to make the best of it anyway, I guess. Now I've really got to do something. How about it, Betty? I mean, about our teaming up. But I'm not a sports writer. Well, I'll do the writing, you do the sketches. Would it help you break into print? Well, sure it would. Besides, I need you, Betty. I mean, well, you're the only source of information I have. The one who could help me with my research. How about it? Well, maybe. Only if the research is strictly confined to quarter horses. Better start brushing him down over there. Now, there may be a difference between a thoroughbred and a quarter horse. But to the average Joe, a horse is a horse. Well, we can easily prove that they are different. They look different. They run different. They're two entirely different breeds. Well, that's where little Miss Research comes in. You give me the lowdown, and we're off to the races. Off to the races. Lon, you're a genius. Why, thank you. <laughs> Meet me in the East Pasture at 6 a.m. Don't forget JoJo. I mean, Texas Dandy. Oh, 
Oh, no, I'll get fired sure if she finds out. Oh, relax, Fred. The Queen won't be up for a while yet, and besides, Flyaway's in my charge today. But, Miss Betty, you're supposed to paint her, not race her. Here's the stopwatch. Admit first that Flyaway's one of the fastest thoroughbreds in the country. That's why McDougal wants her. Thank you. See that first white flag down there? Yeah. That's a quarter of a mile. Let's race it and see what happens. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Go! Not bad. Not bad. Did you see him hit top speed in two jumps? Jackrabbit can do that. So quarter horses get away like jackrabbits. That's a good point for your story. Okay, okay. But while Jojo gave his all in the quarter mile, Flyaway hadn't even warmed up yet. That's exactly a strong point, Dopey. Strong? When he's all in after a quarter of a mile? But he can run that quarter of a mile over and over again and always hit top speed in a skip and jump. Swing your horse around there. I'll show you something. Here, Jojo. Here, hold these. Now look at them side by side. See how this one's heavily muscled up, heavily muscled forearm. Now look at the thoroughbred. Narrow chest, long cannon. Deep chest, short cannon, strong pastor. Say, you can speak Greek too. And look, terrific lungs. Okay, but those are all technicalities. So a writer has to know the technicality and be able to put them into his story on warm and human terms. Well, I'd, uh, I'd still like to see what would happen if Jojo had to run more than a quarter of a mile. I can tell you exactly what would happen. But since you're from Missouri... Indiana. Give me a leg up. Come here, Flyway. <sighs> Pasture's about a half a mile long. Let's go down to the end of it and race back. Okay. Hey, hurry up, you two! Mrs. Bagley will fire me! Hurry up! in the lead and approaching the quarter marker. Giorgio is still in the lead. Now they pass the quarter marker. There's Flyaway coming up. They're neck and neck. They're approaching the third furlong. Flyaway wins by a nose. Amazing. He almost beat Flyaway at three furlongs. I didn't think he had it in him. Those kids have got an idea and they don't know it. One furlong, two furlongs. That's a quarter of a mile. Three furlongs. Quarter horse, third of it. No, you're anything but a fool, Zelda Bagley. You wouldn't go for it.
No, too risky for me. Unless... Uh... Ah, there you are, little fellas. I thought I'd lost you. You take me for an idiot. First you want me to play chess for your place. Then you want to trade it in for a thoroughbred. And now this harebrain idea. I thought you'd be in a sports format. Now, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You want me to race my thoroughbred against your quarter horse for a quarter mile? That's right. How subtle. Now, look. The blueprints for the track are ready. I want to send them out for bids. I'll give you 15,000. Couldn't buy a fly away for four times that sum. All right, I'll race you for half a mile. How subtle. Look, if you lose, you only lose a horse. If I lose, I lose everything I've got in the world. Come back, you old beetle. Sit down. You're breaking my heart. But I'm telling you, Mac, it's suicide. You'll lose your shirt. Now, be smart and call this thing off. I couldn't if I wanted to. The betting papers from Zelda's lawyers. If either party defaults for any reason whatsoever, the other party automatically wins. You mean you signed this? Mm-hmm. Is the date set? Time, 3 p.m., November 13th. Well, I hope you're not superstitious. Place, Arizona State Fair, Phoenix. Impossible. That's within two weeks. Now, after I win Flyaway, I won't need Giorgio anymore. So I'm going to sell them to you two kids for one dollar in hand paid. Oh, Mr. McDougal, you're wonderful. Oh, here yeah, now, none of this nonsense. I thought you said this. Look what just came in the mail. Fifty dollars. Then they did buy your story. Our story. You're rich, Lottie boy. We're rich. And you know what? I'm going to open a bank account, a joint bank account. Why, Mr. Decker, what a charming way to propose. Huh? Joint bank accounts are for husbands and wives. Oh. Well, um, couldn't we have one if we were just engaged? Oh, then it is a proposal. No, it's a joint bank account. <laughs> Be glad to consider additional articles. We believe you have a new wrinkle in the quarter horse idea. Let's have something exciting and more of those wonderful sketches. Looks promising for that joint bank account. Maybe in a year or two we'll have enough saved to buy ourselves a... House. A horse. Quarter horse. A mare for Jojo. And raise ourselves a mess of little dandies. Oh, Lon, that's something I've always dreamed about. Something exciting. Well, the race, of course. Yes, the race. Oh, but that story is good only if Jojo wins. But if he loses? No story. No Texas dandy. No mare. No little dandies. Well, whichever way it goes, there's one thing I never want to lose. I have to go now and and paint the profile of a very handsome bull. Bull. You women are all alike. And the first ton of muscles comes along, you go gaga. <laughs> yes.
hurt badly. We better get him home to the barn. Come on, boy. Come on. He's pretty weak from loss of blood. I only hope tetanus doesn't sit in. Gave him a shot just in case. Does he stand a chance, Doc? The temperature is going to tell the story. Here's where medicine stops and luck takes over. Oh, Lon, if he dies. Mac, I'll go and see Miss Bagley. I just can't believe she'd insist on winning the bet without even running a race. No. You don't know Zelda Bagley. Jojo's got to run this race. He's got to. But, Mac, you heard what the doc said. Jojo may not even live. He's got to live. I tell you, he's got to live. It would be inhuman to run. I put everything on him. It would be a lot more inhuman if I lost it all. But, Mac, how can you expect a sick horse to run? The same way he always ran, only this time he may need a little more help than usual. Mac! And just what kind of help would that be? Well, I... Uh... Well, what? Well, now I'm beginning to see it. No wonder you said it wasn't a haircut that made Jojo run. You doped that horse. You ran a crooked race and you got yourself a chump to ride for Supposing you. Supposing I did. What is it your business? It is my business because I wrote a story about a man, an honest man who races a quarter horse, a man who's supposed to be an example for other people to look up to, to imitate. You shouldn't have done that, Sonny. Don't Sonny me. A father, that, that's what I almost took you to be. What a laugh. You're nothing but a crook, a con man. Thanks for nothing, Pappy. I thought it might be important. Aren't you going to read it? They want you to write the story about the race. A story like that would be the making of you. It should be written. It could be written. Because Jojo is on his feet. Got up by himself. <laughs> Come on, Sonny. Penicillin should help. That horse sure has got stamina. But he'll need plenty of looking after the next few days. Thanks, Doc. I didn't get much sleep last night. Had plenty of time to sort of think things out. Sort of, uh... Oh, stick with us, will you, Sonny? Jojo needs you. I need you, too. I 
And if by some miracle Jojo is able to run, I said by some miracle now, I got no one else to train him but you. I mean, of course, if the vest says it's all right for him to run. Look, Mac, even when he was well, that horse had three strikes against him running more than his quarter mile limit. I saw you racing him with fly away the other day and Jojo only lost by a nose. But you were right, Sonny. I wasn't going to take any chances. I was going to help the horse. But now I want to give him a sporting chance. That story you wrote of Jojo and me, I want it to be the truth. Don't you see, if we don't run, we lose everything anyway? And could we do any worse if we ran and lost? gimmicks for this rug radio what goes on here anyway horses like color and music make them feel good oh horses and all the time i thought you'd come to spread the welcome mat for little old me <laughs> seven days to nurse a sick horse back to health to get him in shape for the race of his life whatever illusions mcdougall might have had betty and i knew it was a hopeless undertaking even though Jojo, I mean Texas Dandy, seemed to sense how important it was for him to get well and what the race meant to all of us. Neither loving care, cautious handling, a doctor's constant supervision, nor even a number of penicillin shots seemed helpful enough. Time was too short, and even the vet was dubious. Then, on the third day, the cut suddenly started scarring up. Maybe things were looking up. Maybe there was hope after all. Betty and I took a deep breath. On the fourth day, Jojo really showed what a quarter horse is made of. And our dream, Betty's and mine, to own him and to raise ourselves some coats, took on the semblance of possibility, if not reality. On November the 10th, just three days before the race, I rode Jojo for the first time. And then, the day of the race. This race is nothing but a senseless formality. You haven't got a chance. You know it. You can save us both a lot of trouble by taking this. 5,000. Two weeks ago, you offered me 15. I could have the place for nothing just by running the race. <laughs> Thanks just the same, Zelda. But it wouldn't be sporting. Sporting? All right, commit suicide. Dash your head against the wall. Bring about your own downfall. Monday, I'm moving in with my wrecking crew. Mac, maybe you should have taken that 5,000. Me take arms from Zelda Bagley? Not on your life. Well, the, the vet says Jojo's pretty well healed up now. It'll be okay for him to run. You know, Mac, I've never been superstitious. But if there was ever a time when you needed that little good luck charm of yours, this is it. Good luck charm? How careless of me. How downright reckless. You start the car. I'll be right back.
ladies and gentlemen, one of the most unusual races in track history. A match race between a famous thoroughbred and a champion quarter horse. Racing experts still argue whether a quarter horse can really beat a good thoroughbred at a quarter mile. Some say he can. Some say he cannot. Remember, this event calls for three furlongs, three eighths of a mile. For the past 300 years, quarter horses have been bred to run only the short race, a quarter mile or less. So this is one eighth of a mile longer and should turn out to be some classic. That's the kind of publicity the association would ordinarily welcome. The only joker here is this may boomerang on us because it's about a con man and a doped horse. Well, now's your chance to catch him red-handed. I've been waiting for this for a long time. If he wins, you make the lap test. It'll be a pleasure, Major. Wish you good luck. It might help you win to know that I bet our joint bank account on JoJo. All of it? All of it. Good luck.
haven't got fly away yet. Cheating. A chess player. Oh. We're making no accusation, you understand, Mr. McDougall, that this test is merely precautionary. But we have reason to assume that... Assume nothing. Why, this is an outrage. I Back. never... Come here. Tell me, you didn't really. Why, I wouldn't think of it. I... I did. Oh, Mac. Is this what you always gave the horse? I deny everything. You can't prove a thing. Tell me, man. Tell me. I've got the country's most valuable man's stake. It's nothing but aspirin. Aspirin? What's this country coming to? Can't a man give his horse an aspirin to relieve a headache? Aspirin's not considered a stimulant in the rule book, is it, Major? No, I'm afraid not. Well, there's nothing we can do, I guess. You'll me my hand on that fire. Give me those pills. I've got a headache. Oh. <laughs> hey, tell me, man. How do you know when a horse has a headache? Well, that fool cowboy I wanted from told me to give Jojo these pills if I wanted him to win. <laughs> Come on, Pappy, let's see. Let's yes, go. yes. The victory is confirmed. It's Texas Dandy. Come on, Flyway. Come on, girl. Get up there. That's a good girl, Flyway. Hmm. Fly away. World's fastest thing on four legs. Well, almost the fastest. <laughs> so long, Pappy. <laughs> Thanks for everything, Mac. Well, so long, kids. I'll see you in Hylia. <laughs>